Hello everybody, it's Holger Müller here, uh, greeting everybody to the first inaugural HR Analyst Water Cooler Call uh, with uh, ladies first, Molly Lombardi, and for me she's on my bottom left, <laughs> Trish McFarlane on the bottom right, and uh, Thomas Otter is our international guest playing the American card from Heidelberg, Germany, I guess. Welcome everybody. Oh goodness. Hi. Hello. Sorry. Hey, guten Tag everybody, as they say in the local vernacular. Yeah. Good, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Localized. I was in Jamaica. Cool. It's, all well, I, it's all Irie for me. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's Irie. <laughs> Very good. So, so during the week we were saying, oh, there's no live events anymore. Most of us saw each other last at Ultimates Conference in Las Vegas. This is two weeks ago. So we said we have to come up with something else. And last night I thought, before doing the right decision of not working, feeling guilty, walking a local state park, uh, Torrey Pines. Uh, and thinking I should be doing work, but then I thought, hey, now uh, California is on stay in shelter, so I can't go out even anymore. So I did the right decision in hindsight, right? <laughs> Sometimes you have to stomach a little bit conscience and thought, okay, why don't we try this? And thank you guys for jumping on right away on the tweet, which I sent out many people couldn't make it short term and so on. So we'll try to repeat this again. So let's talk about the thing which is on everybody's mind, right? What's, what's the local Corona status in, uh, Molly, I believe you're in Boston, right? Yeah, it's been weird. So I was just in Jamaica for 10 days and uh, to come back to this sort of jumpstart, I mean, it was a little, Corona was a little bit um, prevalent when I left, but to come back 10 days later and have the whole world change has been very odd. Yeah. So yeah. they let um, you back in. Lucky you. They let me back in. Basically, we flew home yesterday and they basically, the island of Jamaica was getting ready to shut down. Yeah. And what's going on in Boston right now? Can you leave your home now or you're in place or? Oh. Sorry. We might be losing. Oh, so what's going on in Boston right now? Someone tried can, to can call you me. Lose, lose Someone... your, leave your house or? No, tried to call we me. can leave our houses, but there's oh, okay. only takeout and we grocery stores are limited. So my husband's going to try and shop later. We'll see what he gets. <laughs> I sent him a wish list. Are you allowed to go outside and work out? That's my important question here. We are. As soon as my meniscus heals, we'll be. <laughs> No, 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 personally also. a different story, but it, 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 <laughs> yeah. you have to have the right to go. Trish, all things in, in it's it's Kansas City, right? Somewhere no, I'm actually outside, outside of St. Louis, Louis, but I live in Illinois, Sorry. and, Sorry. and, and it's, it's very similar to Boston. Boston. So yeah, our government is pretty aggressive when it comes to keeping, keeping us indoors. indoors. So we've we actually been trying to keep home. We can go to the grocery store if you'd like, but all restaurants and bars are closed. You have to get takeout if you would like. So a lot of people are doing, um, with like in a small town, there's lots of supporting the small businesses and to make sure they're still going. And you can obviously check on loved ones, family members, that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. And all things in, um, in Heidelberg, in Germany. Hey, you know, much the same. We've had a lockdown probably, oh, a few days now. And you're still allowed to go for a walk in the, in the woods and stuff, but, um, Pretty much, pretty much only to the grocery, grocery store, store, the pharmacy, uh, all, all the other shops are pretty much closed. Uh, the strict, strict rules, rules in terms of picking up food from restaurants and so on. So yeah. all, all much the same. Yeah. yeah, so shelter in place in California. So um, the interesting thing is that people can't go to work, right? Many of the places to like Italy yeah. said people can still go to work for a long time, right? And now basically you're taking out the fifth largest economy, which California is by itself. Uh, except for yeah. essential jobs. I looked up the essential jobs definition, 16 industries, so it's quite a lot. By the way, it's also IT work, in case you work in a data center. <laughs> mm. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. should go to work and so on, right? Chemical plants, manufacturing, <laughs> critical manufacturing. It's actually a nice website I tweeted out last night. Cool, but uh, okay, we have to get Corona out of our system, right? Do we have to do any more Corona? <laughs> because then I would like to switch to talking about what we all care about, ultimately long-term, which is HR. Anything else we have to get sure. out on Corona? No, I think more than enough has been said on Corona by more than enough people. I, I think my only thing I'd like to say on Corona, unless you're a virus expert or, you know, have a PhD in statistics, be quiet. Uh, we don't ask uh, doctors to evaluate software. So so let's let's keep our opinions as analysts to ourselves, unless we actually know something about the about the topic. Um, 
because we will we the signal and noise volumes are way out of control here. Yeah. yeah. Enough exactly. people talking about it, but 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 I answered to you on Twitter when you tweeted that, Thomas. I think we still have to think about how it changes the way how people are working. Right? Yeah. What does it mean for HR professionals? What does change in best practice? How you reach out to your employees? How you care for your employees and so on? I think that's an interesting uh, mm -hmm. thing for us yeah, to observe, yeah. and that we should have an opinion and voice for that. So, because yeah, we, yeah. we supposedly are the expert on that. You know? <laughs> if you are the expert on that, great. You know, yeah. No, no, no. On the, on, on the change of best practices, right? How, yeah. how our environment mm -hmm. changes and we change, well, we at Constellation, we say future of work is when we work, how we work, what motivates you to work and so on, right? So I think that's something we should look at because it's going to be very, mm -hmm. very different how you lead people, how you lead teams, how people get a mm -hmm. sense of togetherness, right? I know I know from, from our oldest daughter at their work at a high-tech company in the Bay Area, they do uh, virtual lunches. So mm -hmm. they still eat at home, but they, 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 they look on Zoom or whatever it is and, <laughs> and look to each other. I don't know how long this works, if that works, right? It's all new. But uh, we, we all know that remote workers, when remote working was sometimes a privilege, uh, felt the sense of being not connected and so on. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. I yeah. think it's going to totally change what jobs we think can be done from home, too. I think there's going to be a lot of people who said, mm -hmm. you told me my job could be done from home. And guess what? I just did it for six months or however long. Yeah. 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 I think you're right about the length of time, too. If this were just something for a few weeks, I think people would go back to work as business as usual. But if this last month, and you're right, once you sort of prove you can do it. I think the other thing is maybe people who glamorize from home or they think that it's, yeah. we're sitting at home being bon bon, they're, they're not saying very quickly, but it's very challenging to do. It takes a certain type of person to stay focused um, on point, make those connections. It is a very long at time. So I think we'll see a lot of people maybe judging it differently going forward. I agree, yeah. And I think yeah. a lot of people who I know who work from home had daycare or childcare for the kids. Mm -hmm. And now the kids are home without childcare. So that's a very different dynamic than working from home when there's no one to bother you or there's someone to deal with the requests from the children. Um, so I think that's going to be very different for people as well. It's not usual work from home either. Well, and yeah. also we're supposed to be school teachers. Right, exactly. I have high schoolers and I'm supposed to still somehow manage to keep them educated as well, which is very challenging. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of parents frustrated and trying to figure out how do you work and educate your children. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm kind of done with photos of CEOs in their home offices that are big as most people' apartments, telling everybody how brave they are working from home. <laughs> I'm kind of done with that one. No more of that. Huh? No. Well, I saw some funny ones of CEOs being kicked in the kitchen because you're running out of office space at home, right? Same thing. I'm just waiting for operating system vendors to enhance the things where you can have your work camera and then also have the feed of what's happening in the kids' room, what's happening with oh, the teenager, right? So, so tracking oh, them go. so you can always say, okay, sorry, I have to run. <laughs> because then there's no good technology support that I found for that right now, right? So You, you have well, a you second machine, surely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, of course, of course. We all have this, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting hard, tough questions for running around with three phones. There's a solution in that part. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Older, you were an innovator. We didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. No, you're just a weirdo with the three phones. We've known that well, for a while. Well, that's <laughs> I hope so that this makes people be a little more gentle with each other, whether we go back to work at some point in the near future or farther away, is that we're maybe a little more understanding of we do have a lot to manage beyond just kind of the work in front of us. And sometimes that is a dog barking your kids or someone at your door. Maybe we're a little more tolerant of that going forward. Yeah, we used to hide working from home. Yeah. Right. Now I, th I think it will way. humanize much, much more, right? So yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. everybody is in the same boat, most of the people, and everybody understands that there's interruptions and you just have to cope mm -hmm. with them. It might change the yeah, meeting yeah. culture too, right? Instead of having 160 minutes dedicated, right? The staple of American, mm. North American management culture, it might be just 10, 15 minute meetings because you yes. can't go away, but you might have them twice a day, right? So the interaction yeah. might change how often people talk and lead their teams and ask the mm. questions and so on. Yeah. Cool. And I've actually realized why all futuristic movies have people dressed in uniform. It's because they can't decide what to wear on a webcast. So. <laughs> yeah. You all think, though, I mean, we're, we're fairly used to jumping on kind of like this. And yeah. Whatever we have on. Yeah. Right? The fact uh, that I can get my hair to lay down is okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I spent an hour. I spent an hour doing my. Did you get right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did an hour. Yeah. Spent an hour doing my hair and yeah. I, I, need my glasses. Of, I need a lot of work too, and I noticed I need a haircut, and now I won't get one for at least a month. I so. know. 
I'm I wondering, though, I think a lot of times people won't do video chats or in the past would be reluctant because they wanted to feel like it was much more formal. They needed to have makeup on, hair done, whatever. And uh, I'm hoping that's not the case now. Yeah. Well, I think also, too, I mean, I used to think, I'm just old enough to think of photographs and video as an event. And now people are like, it's just part of your day, you know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. hard to do digital events. I mean, I give kudos to SAP Ariba on Oops. Wednesday. They did their Ariba Live uh, digitally using the oh. little old uh, SAP streaming platform, but at least they had the event. Uh, the challenge is, of course, you have to realize that you have to do this differently, right? I I was on the call with uh, Thomas Sauer, I think, afterwards, and I tweeted that and said, look, you haven't realized the format. Why? You couldn't make it in person, but you could have a video conference call for 10 minutes mm -hmm. uh, saying what you think about Ariba, which is now part of his uh, product development part. And said, yeah, we have to all learn about how to, how to use it digital because yeah. we still yeah. think like right. where I am is where it happens. And that really changes digital events. And kudos to, to SAP from that perspective because they did a they did it, they didn't do it great, but uh, like uh, Oracle canceled their digital event, they announced Google canceled their digital event, which they announced. So if Google cancels wow. it, if I'm a normal company out there in the country, what can I do with my town hall meeting and so on? So yeah. uh, that, yeah. that's uh, going to be interesting learning. Don't lesson. you think, though, that I would really glad that I feel to move forward with it because it demonstrates it doesn't have to be all worked out. It doesn't have to all be perfect. Yeah. It was really, you know what I mean? It was about sharing that information in a very timely manner. So I was really glad they did it in whatever format. Um, and I'm not disagreeing with you, Holger. I'm just saying, like, I, I wish that more wouldn't have canceled or postponed for months. I wish they would have at least had some sort of information for, you know. Because the important well, message to me is li life is still going on, business is right, going right. on, customers yeah. are using yeah. their software, they want to know what's happening, okay? Right. Often people can't make it to an event, so what, what am I doing? I'm reading the press release, I'm reading a presentation or rewatching the stream, so companies have to realize it's not about being the lucky person who jumped into a tin box and <laughs> is stressed and sleep deprived in a cramped space towards the Tino, that's not really the experience, right. so that will change, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think it'll also make people appreciate why remote learning is different than in person. You can't just take an in person course and put a video camera on it. Yeah. Because I think when you think about presenting or talking in this medium, you have to rethink how that it's not the same as just putting a video camera on what you do every day. True. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, absolutely right. Very true. All right. And, and you find certain skills, right? I have to give kudos to the Bavarian teenagers who on Monday. Because Bavaria closed schools and they had an online platform if rural worked, who knows, right? But uh, some kids uh, did a denial of service attack on the platform, so the school was down. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so kudos to them, right? So, uh, yeah, here you have to. And, yeah, and they've also kids, done the, uh, they've also nailing <laughs> Zoom's ratings on. Exactly. On I saw um, that as well. Uh, right? but, the Apple Store. What, what difference is going to make if I don't like to take my classes, uh, which makes my university is using Zoom, I read that one. So if I rate it badly, do you think the university is going to stop doing it? But Zoom has some no. performance issues, which is interesting, right? So although in China the the kids the kids attacked the the app on on the Apple Store so so strongly that the Apple pulled it. Wow! <laughs> interesting. interesting, interesting. All right, so we switch yeah. to HR anyway. topics. Indeed. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Molly, Molly, you wanted to talk, which I'm not 100% sure, but you, glad you're here to tell us. You want to talk about resources for workers, bosses, and yeah. HR. What did you mean with that? Well, I think mostly it was along the lines of like, how do I manage a team? How do I hold a meeting? How do I engage people remotely? Mm -hmm. And also from like an EAP point of view, are there companies that are offering, I mean, I think about domestic violence during this time. Right. It's not a happy topic, but if your abuser is stuck at home with you, right, and you don't have a coworker or a teacher to tell, or if you're just stressed or if you're afraid, you know, how are people, are they using their EAP resources or other resources, the public resources? How are we getting people whose refuge from violence or other issues in the home may be going to school or going to work? You know, I think that's going to be a huge, I mean, it's not really, it's an HR issue. It's not just a work issue, but I think it could be very frightening for it does to some People. Yeah, and uh, the next thing is, if you get a nine one one call, is uh, can you visit and find people, right? And will the police be there to yeah. respond and do that, right? So Perfect. this is why even in Germany, I mean, right, I don't have any good resources, but strictly anti-gun uh, has more gun permits in the last six months or twelve months or something than ever before, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think too, I, mean, I don't have any great resources, but if people do, please tweet us and or share them and. Um, what's the hashtag for this virtual water cooler or whatever it is? 
Yeah, with hashtag, my in, infinite yeah. creativity this morning, I came up with HRA for HR analyst uh, WCC water cooler call. <laughs> Okay, yeah. great. So, so use that right? very so, complicated hashtag. <laughs> well, I, I, I was thinking to spell it out, but then I thought it's getting too long, right? So, yeah. Okay. So, well, yeah, so certainly interesting. Um, also, hmm? Go ahead. Sorry. I'm hoping somebody will write a guide to onboarding to working from home. Yeah, I think people are... That, that guide I mean, should have been very... written a long time ago, right? Uh, I think it has been written. Should... Yeah. We, we should find it. I think it has been written somewhere. We should find yeah. it. Yeah. I think there are like thousand blog posts about it in the next few days too. So. But but it's so yes. hard for people, yeah. right? So I, I listen to the Wall Street Journal technology podcast. And there's a technology person who reviews software for consumers and, and gadgets and so on, Joan Stan, who other is smart, right? But yesterday her review was how to use Slack. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, how yeah. can you be more in a bubble? Of course we all know Slack, right? But Slack is like affecting maybe Two percent, three percent of the world right now. Right? So, can't you think of something which is less of you in the ivory tower, uh, in terms of like practical usage and so on? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. How to use so. the camera on your iPhone? Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> or how to use your iPhone as a backup, as you practice today, Molly, right? There you go. See, yeah. I'm already, I'm being an example. I'm leading people. Older. Then, exactly. Resources for people, bosses, and HR folks, as you call it. Yeah. I will say, okay. um, I saw yesterday, I think it was posted yesterday, um, Mike Fisher, and he's at Fishdog on Twitter. He did a video on everything from how to film yourself at your home office, as well as lighting, microphone, Things like that. So it is pretty practical. It's yeah. a very long video. We were wanting to know just how to set up a basic, inexpensive home office. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, okay. Yeah. So this was related to the situation. Then it wasn't like an HR topic. Anything else on resources, <laughs> Molly? <laughs> you want to say? Uh, no, share? Even if you have to share. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the irony: how hard it's for business, right? So. I'm, I'm looking at the Peloton schedule this weekend, who's teaching when, hmm. and it's completely empty. There's no yeah. U.S. people. This is oh, before yeah. anything happened. It's completely empty from U.S. people, right? Really? And I'm saying, what is going on? And so there should be a, a corona-proof business, right? So hmm. they're moving their studio in New York this week. So this is why they can't Are produce, they right? But but how, how can yeah, you be as bad as a modern business and saying, okay, in the week where I have most of my users, <laughs> customers, clients, Are writers home. at home, yeah. right? I do the least content production only out of the London studio <laughs> for like three days, I right? Mean, yeah. so maybe cancel the move or maybe delay the move or maybe broadcast from two studios. So uh shame on peloton for me for being this new <laughs> startup work at home thing if you leave i've got a very job. small violin playing for you right now holder it's a really <laughs> small little violin holder I'm playing. Has for his workout. yeah 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 well you can go outside for a run i have to get on my bike to to work out now so. but molly you have a peloton yeah. too as well right that's doing a little personal stuff i right? do yes yeah right so we have to do some yeah. virtual races now we should absolutely well races i mean you know Peloton is booming. Oh, I talk to the delivery guys here like uh, twice a week because they stop next to my Starbucks and they, they have uh, double the deliveries right now. So good, good for them. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be interesting to see what happens to delivery and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So back to HR topics, right? So um, well, we want to pick something or we have, of course, the, the Kronos Ultimate thing. We have the Zaba Cornerstone thing. Uh, Trish, you were at UltiConnect. Thomas and Molly, you guys could mail. Molly, you were too. Were you? Yeah, Molly. Uh, I was there. memory says, yeah, sorry, Molly, you were there too much. You couldn't make it. What do you guys want to talk about what's happening in our industry right now? Well, I think just in general, it's an interesting time for both of those that you just mentioned because while we just a mere two weeks ago were very focused on how the companies would either be merged or how they would figure things out during the acquisition for the other one. I feel like I bet that from the employee perspective, they're much more focused on just that immediate need of who's working, where are they working, how are we communicating with them. I can only imagine, when you think about how difficult a merger and acquisition communications are for anyone that goes through, but then to add in sort of a global crisis at the same time, it's got to just be a nightmare. Yeah, could, could for revenge and the lofty integration plans, no question about it. Yeah. yeah. I think, too, just from a strategic standpoint, you know, we were hoping to get some information from 
from say Cornerstone and Tower on how things might be moving forward and then with like events canceling, postponing, changing, it might mean a slower trickle of information or it may also mean that decisions aren't being made as quickly because they are doing so many other things as well. Yeah. So it leaves their employees even in a state of uncertainty for longer. And then it leaves for consumers in the state of uncertainty for longer with what's even going to happen with their products. So it'll be interesting to see how both handle this. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Oh, Molly, Molly has gone dark. Oh, Molly's back. No, she's back. Sorry, yeah. I was Sorry. yelling my headphones. Yelling yelling my headphones. My headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I think one of the big challenges about Kronos and Ultimate is going to be how do they maintain their reputation for um, culture and diversity in all this. And I think Aaron has a big opportunity with the new pipeline to um, to put more diversity in this pipeline. I mean, we've all sat in the rooms where we've had you know nine white guys from Massachusetts <laughs> who've led Kronos yeah. in the past. And so how do they make sure they really take advantage of that? I will yeah, say I think I'm that's key. That also, if they're going to glow up. Okay, go ahead. No, you're up to YouTube. I was just going to say, I, I was very impressed that he did spend quite a bit of time, at least in the analyst meeting, directing that exact topic, right? On, on how his personal number one priority is the culture integration. And if he has lots of smart people around him to help with more of the um, other strategic aspects of the business, and so he's going to touch those, with it. he does realize that, that culture is his top priority in bringing these companies mm. together. Yeah, and I think that. Yeah, uh, I, I guess the challenge for, for me is are, are they going to globalize? Because they've, they both toyed at it. I mean, Kronos has some global activity, but it's it's predominantly a U.S. company with a lot of international acquisitions rather than a product set that's that's, that's globally designed. Um, and and Ultimate has very little global capacity other than, than PeopleDoc. Um, Absolutely right. Yep. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how they how they take, or if they take, really, really take that on. But I think there's, there's definitely space in the market for another global you know, global players. Essentially, it's three musketeers at the moment, and right. we could do with some more. Yeah, more I think they have the capability. And again, if this was two weeks ago, the answer might be really different. That they would have moved maybe more aggressively towards that. But now, I just wonder if you know hmm. if this will unfortunately slow that move down. Yeah, I just see if I remember, if I see a room of ten Americans talking about globalization, I'm you know I'm not really impressed. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> because because the American views we're in Canada and Mexico, we're global, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean I'm being I'm being facetious a little bit here, but if you wanna have a if you wanna succeed globally then you kinda of need to have a a team that's built globally itself. It's a great point because the make or break for both Kronos Ultimate separate or or combined now even more is to grow internationally. Because otherwise mm -hmm. they they, they, they can't they can't grow because the Kronos has nothing to win has only to lose because of their move into mm. HR not everybody will partner with them everybody's building their own workforce management you know, and Alt ultimate mm. has to renovate and, and innovate their product so international is one yep. of the yep. key key success factors in the medium run yeah mm. and Tom, at your point I think it has to be people from those global markets instead of people that are based in the US with only US experience um, to make those decisions it has to like be integrated from a cultural standpoint from each of those countries as well in order for it to be um, really viable. Yeah, but my sort of slightly cynical definition is you're only really a global vendor if you can win in a local market. Right. So in other words, if you, if, if you want to play globally, be a global vendor, having a bunch of American companies force, their, force your product on their subsidiaries is not really being global. But if you can convince a Swedish multinational to buy your product and run it out globally, then you're starting to play on a, on a global basis or an Australian or a Chinese or a South African or an Argentinian company to deploy your product on a global basis, then you're becoming a global vendor. If, you, if you're not able to actually execute from a field execution point of view in local countries, then you're really just playing at it. And yeah. the difficulty for anybody to and break into the I think they have an opportunity given their vertical. 
Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, that yeah, vertical stuff is a really, really good point, with, uh, <laughs> especially with Kronos. Yeah, it's a, yeah and, but they have the local content for that, right? Kronos buying workforce management engine or scheduling engines left and right, like at the click of two, three mm. per year, right? The question is yeah, how yeah. can they integrate that, bring that together, and then use it globally? And nobody is as far advanced as them, right? Ceridian's just finding out the hard way how hard it is to, to get all these local uh, deal, uh, con labor contracts and best practice in place, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, you just look at it at the moment. moment. You just look at the moment, all the German companies moving on to Kurzarbeit, which is the, the shorter working schedule, mm -hmm. which has a huge payroll and, and time and attendance implication. And if, 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 you know, if you don't understand those rules, you know, you, you, you're not going to work in Germany. It's just right. not going to fly. So say the name of the vendor a little yeah. more slower for everybody not being familiar with them. But the, 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 the concept is Kurzarbeit, which is short work. Oh, yeah, yeah. Short, yeah. Okay. And, 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 and no, um, I think there are a few interesting startups. And in, there's obviously the well-established players in Germany and time of attendance. Atos is the, the, the big one. Um, Kronos has had some success there, but there's a bunch of interesting short startups in, in time and attendance, uh, shift scheduling and so on in Germany. I like one out of Berlin called Shift Plan. Mm -hmm. That's shift spelled with a Y. Uh, yes. That's really they've sort of cloud centric, um, strong on compliance uh, play. I, I really like, like those guys. Right. So, so, so there's quite so a lot of innovation in time and attendance at the moment, which is, which is uh, I think quite, quite, quite promising. Of necessity, right? So quick audience, uh, Education, in case you don't know, Kurzarbeit, literally yeah. translated short work, is something that companies in Germany, Switzerland, Austria have the same concept. It works a little different in Italy, as far as I know, can apply if they have not much work, where people go down from 40 hours to 30 to 20, whatever hours, and they get subsidies from the government. The economical idea is yeah. it's cheaper uh, to have jointly paid people instead of having them unemployed and let go. And that's the idea. Become yeah, so basically, go ahead. So, so take the automotive industry, though. The company will pay 30% of the salary. The, I'm just making the numbers up here, but to give you guys a sense, the company will pay maybe 30% of the salary. The state will pay, you know, another 40%, and the employee will take a cut for a little while. But you keep your job. And then, and then as the economy improves, then those numbers, those numbers change again. But it means that the businesses can then ramp up quickly. And 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 this is quite successful for German industry with the. With the last crash, remember when the, all the car companies were failing? The, the German car industry covered really quickly because they actually still had all the engineers and the and the and the plant workers and stuff on the payroll. And then, as as production ramped up, they were able to uh, they were able to do really well. Uh, so it's a, it's an interesting it's construct, but it has a lot of complexities for payroll and and time and attendance when you shift to those to those to those models. What? And, and of course, was not very relevant at the moment yeah. when the economy was booming, like it was in the last eight years. So who would build HR automation for Kurzarbeit, right? As an example yeah. of, of yeah. a way to cope with it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So if we, if we switch a little bit from away from Kronos Ultimate to the the small uh, merger between Cornerstone and Zaba, what, what's your guys take there? What's your view on that? That's a few billion between friends. So what? I didn't hear. Oh, uh, switching from Kronos uh, Ultimate to Cornerstone and Zaba, right? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I, I can, can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Molly seems to have some connectivity issues. She'll be back. Yeah. What's your take, Thomas, Trish? Trish, you first. Ladies first. Um, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a good thing. I think it's interesting in terms of um, their desire for it to really grow their reach. So, you know, in a time when it was very difficult maybe to find engineers with that subject matter expertise, that's a good way for them to certainly throw out their capabilities. I thought that when we talked about being able to innovate and still having a smaller team of engineers kind of connected on the Sabra products, it's been really cool the majority of it sounded like two thirds over onto the cornerstone development. I, I think that's a good plan for now. I'm always curious though with any of these, if you hang on, especially in acquisition, if you hang on to products from the acquired company for too long, using their own brand, I, I've just not seen those go too successfully longer term. So that's probably what I'll be watching. One of the things watching really closely is how they handle that. Yeah, and very good point. Interesting. 
Thomas, your, your take? Look, the, the, looking at sort of cynically, the market didn't take it very well. No. Um, not that the market is always the always right, but the, but you know that's one that's one significant factor. Um, I think the challenge they have to decide is is what is their business, because they didn't buy a core HR vendor, right? And they have a theoretically a dominant position in learning management, and then they have several also ran products around the edges. So also ran in performance management, also ran in recruitment with 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 the bits and pieces in Saba, and and, and Cornerstones recruitment. So. Yeah, I think the challenge is: do they do they focus on becoming the world's dominant learning vendor, right. and with all that, so content, uh, uh, experience, etc., LMS, micro learning, nano learning, any form of learning, they become like the Amazon of learning, mm -hmm. and and or, or or do they try and continue to to play in? This the telemanagement space, which which I don't believe really exists anymore. I, I don't really believe there is a, a sector called integrated telemanagement. But you either get it from your your core vendor, mm -hmm. uh, or you buy niche products for each of those components. And there isn't this halfway house of of integrated of of integrated talent. I don't really see that as a sustainable uh, market segment anymore. Ten years ago it was, um, but but today I don't really see that as a as a as something that people buy. People buy recruitment, people buy learning, people buy compensation, people buy, buy OKRs, or they buy, uh, buy it all. Uh, they don't chunk it up in the way that the Cornerstone, the Cornerstone portfolio positions, positions it to be. No, so, so that's that's kind of my that's the thing that I'm 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 grappling with. Look, I've not had a long I've not had much conversation with with Cornerstone since the since the acquisition. So I'm really commenting here as as, a, as an outsider on on, on this one. Um, I, I was, um, you know, they made a couple of acquisitions, smaller acquisitions, which I think have been quite good for Cornerstone. Um, they they did stuff a couple of years ago now in. In, in retail and in a retail focused product and in um, uh, uh, nano learning or mi a micro learning product which was which is good and then they recently acquired trust tree uh, which I know pr pretty pretty closely I work with trust tree for a while um, so so I, I felt like they were doing these these tuck-in acquisitions which which made a lot of sense this, this big one I think is a is a big elephant to eat I think it's a it's a good example and that Adam Miller was actually very honest on the webcast right uh, you need to have more scale to compete. Yeah. Uh, and he was saying, which was surprising to me, because you never do this so early, typically, in murder, saying um, that, um, uh, just just trying to help Molly to get on here. There she is. Hold on. Here we go. Welcome back, Molly. Trish, you say something. Yeah. yeah. Are you, is Molly, Trish, back to you then. Yeah, no, no. It's fine. She's here. So, so. Um, Are you back? And he said, Molly, you're back. We'll take one third of the Zaba people stay on the Zaba product, which we maintain, and two thirds we add to the Cornerstone roadmap. So it really comes back to how attractive can Cornerstone build out the rest of talent management, right? Because otherwise, you're absolutely yeah. right in my view, Thomas. Either they're going to be this uh, Amazon of learning, or they have a shot right. to recreate the category of talent management, which we're absolutely right has gone away because, first of all, success vectors, Talu, have been acquired and gone away. Um, they right. couldn't really fill it, right? And then startups are taking things away and new innovative things and recruiting, as an example. And the core of talent management, which I think the biggest virus for talent management suites, which has <laughs> taken them all out, uh, is um, that performance management is broken. Right? And yeah. performance yeah. management yeah. doesn't work, I can't do talent management. I can't hire the right people. I can't onboard my new people with the good people. I don't know if my training was successful. I don't can't pay for performance. I can't do even succession management. And yeah. that's the crux well, think, of the whole category, in my view. Molly. And I think there's two things that brings to mind. One is that we don't have competencies defined. I hate to use that word because you say that word in three quarters of the room throws up. But, you know, when I talk about competence, a definition of what success looks like here, you know, or at your company. And we don't have a common language that, that talks about how we recruit, how we promote, how we build, as well as this idea that, um, you know, obviously it's for performance as well, but so how do we 
create that language around talent. I, that's what talent management and performance needs to be. It's about how we create that language. And I forget the second thing. It'll come back to me. But <laughs> you know what? So I think this is interesting times because depending on how long um, people are either working out of their normal circumstances. I mean, if this goes on for months and months, I think this is actually going to be a good thing for a company like Cornerstone, who's already having. Yeah. The integration with Java was not so much about a uh, feature of functionality, it was about having the people to innovate. Yes. What an amazing opportunity and time for them to really be thinking about talent management differently. Maybe all the old ways that weren't working for the last 20 years. We've talked about how performance isn't working right and talent management isn't working out. Things. This, uh, it strikes me as a very, it strikes me as a very expensive acqui hire, though. You know, if that's the justification, that's a very expensive, expensive acqui hire. It yeah, is. I, I'm not convinced that, that that cyber engineering is so fantastic that I'm prepared to spend that kind of money to to get the engineering capacity of cyber. It's really about the cyber customers. Well, I think yeah. both. I think it's, but I do think it's an interesting thing that we, we chose to do it that way. Whereas if you look at like the ultimate um, Chronos move, that was purely for additional capabilities far beyond what they were able to create on their own. In my mind, I think it was market share because I think Mark Golden is one of the most talent focused CIOs or CTOs or whatever his technical cycle is in the industry. And whenever I hear mm. him talk about his IT, smart guy, team, very smart guy, people. very smart guy. And so I don't think it was, I mean, I think he can take whatever he's part of the South African mafia, if you didn't know. Yes, <laughs> we, we're, we're very dominant, we, we're very secretive, but we, we, we own we own the HR tech space. You guys don't really know about it, but we do. The secret South African brother well, in HR. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I knew a few of you back in the day at Diageo. So. Okay. Well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So the um, I think it was a play for market. You know, so they want to be the giant. You know, and I don't think it was about the engineering or the product necessarily. I mean, they'll take what they can and, and use it. But I think let's just say we're going to be the learning people. Yeah. But then I think they have some hard decisions to make about things like the recruitment products and, and, and so on around the edges. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I think yeah. I've always admired people who stick to their knitting enough to be successful, right? I mean, you need to be, be learning needs to be broad enough to touch performance and stuff like that. But how do you... You know, recruiting is its own suite and things like that. So how do you actually get the benefit of focused innovation on with people who understand process with also the breadth to have you across multiple processes. Yeah, and it's also, I think, how you go to market because there's a buying center and there's a distinct buying center for recruitment. There's yes. a distinct buying center for, for learning. There's a buying center for, for HR. Yeah. But there isn't a buying center for integrated talent. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, the buying center for, for core HR is a combination of, of the chief HR officer and IT. And finance right. sometimes. Yeah, sometimes finance. But I would argue that IT is, the, is, the dominant, is one of the dominant, is the dominant player in that equation. It's probably 40% HR leader, 60% IT. Right. So it's a strategic IT decision to buy a core HR system because you're buying it probably for 20 years. Yeah. Um, whereas the, the telemanagement decisions are more... The, the components of telemanagement, those decisions are more um, uh, uh, tactical and opportunistic. Mm. And, and and this idea of the telemanagement suite. Which seems crazy. It, you, you can't get right. Why the, should the, I tell it the opportunistic and ad hoc? <laughs> because the technologies keep changing so much. Yeah. So recruitment technology is very different. Especially recruitment. Five years ago, what was leading edge in recruitment is is obsolete today in terms of the yeah. in terms of CRM, for instance. It it, well, it, it, it innovates so fast. Yeah, I don't think it's that we need to separate the innovation, but I think we need to have like the the place it holds in our businesses needs to change, right? The innovation may happen in the technology, but its place and sort of who decides how it fits with how we are as a company needs mm -hmm. to be more focused. Yeah, no, it's all very relevant points, but at the core, like we are describing it, the value proposition isn't right, right? If the value proposition is right, buying centers would get created and everybody would need and use uh, integrated talent yeah. management again, right? 
and that's what the vendors okay. have to solve right and uh, usually i mean it doesn't doesn't help to have more people if you don't have the idea and that's i think going to be really sure. the test right. for cornerstone now that they have more people can they really use that capacity adam was uh, oh these are people who know the hr space and so on so can they put that yeah. other those people in the road and show really attractive uh, product because otherwise nobody is yeah. going to resurrect talent management anymore because otherwise they're hr suite vendors or even erp vendors or their best of breed guys who are trying like you said thomas uh, trying to keep up with the changes so quickly that they can't even branch out into more parts right so yes mm. maybe resourcing mm. guys mm. like like i was a smart recruiters conference one of the last conference yes they're going to do onboarding right but that's a tiny extension in the overall talent management space if you're in recruiting right so i don't see anybody having and it's the same buying center that. yeah yeah that too that too absolutely yeah. Right. yeah so when you go to market it doesn't cost you more differently yeah yeah, yeah. cool interesting mm -hmm. anything else mm -hmm. on on acquisitions will we see more acquisitions right there was a tiny one this week yeah. um from from vendor follow closely because care for the globalization part topia which is the global town mobility bought monio which is doing travel and um and, uh, mm -hmm. and correct payroll capabilities which is a huge issue for people who work in multiple countries or jurisdictions and so on so that's that's a minor one but i think it's good news that because I, I strongly believe in globalization i'm a product of globalization i live lived longer outside of my native country than in the native country in my life right so um, yeah me too yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. so so uh, it's a global economy and we have to do much much better to move talent find talent globally might be you hire it you have it already inside uh, so so that's i think encouraging to see i think also to the next best talent right people who aren't skilled yet but who's best able to quickly skill up having more view into that i think it's going to be important true but, you know, I, I think the next few months are going to be very interesting in terms of who buyers who. I, I think a, a lot of vendors who, who were thinking acquisitions are going to be a little bit more cautious. Um, I think suddenly cash is going to become a lot more valuable than it was before. Uh, and due diligence cycles will get longer. I, I think some, I'm guessing here, but it, I also think that, that some valuations will come down on some of the on some, so, 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 so while well, there'll be the cautiousness on one side, I think there'll be a lowering of valuations on the other side. Right. So that may make things may make things that seem quite expensive a few months ago uh, drop significantly in, in, in price. I think there may well be some some good opportunities for for vendors that were overstretched to be acquired. Okay. Right. So who will gain? Right. So so my my tip is uh, video recruiting companies. <laughs> Depending how long we're doing this, if you don't have the capability to recruit via video, right, yeah. there's a few of them left, right? Um, the higher you come, yeah. Although, the although the typically people, recruiting so. recruiting vendors don't do well when companies have headcount freezes, so you know, let's you know, I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps a little bit more cautious well, on recruiting tech in the short but, term. But, but look at the grocery stores; they are hiring extremely here right now, right? So it's again yeah. a talent shift from that perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. But do I want to bring someone in who might be infected or not, or do I do a video interview first, right? So. I think uh, yeah. Uh, the, the yeah, video interviewing. Are... I think is interesting. Um, I've also been doing some work recently on 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 assessment and testing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think there's, there's, a lot there's of some interesting issues. Yeah, interesting opportunities there. Sorry, you were saying, Molly. There's a lot of interesting diversity issues when it comes to video um, and assessments, but I think assessments yeah. conversations have been going on longer than the video one. But things like facial expression and tone of voice and things like that for neurodiversity and disability that i mean right now it's all hands on deck but if we aren't careful those get baked into our systems going forward yeah I, i'm i'm with you there there's a whole bunch of ada never mind never mind just ada there's a whole bunch of ethical questions about how you do video how do you do video recruiting while it, it eliminates some forms of bias i think it creates others as well well, like like every tool, right? Every every new technology, every, every tool, tool yes, that we have absolutely. has pros and cons, right? I'm very worried right tools now that my bad haircut, my bad haircut, and when people look at the digital right. exhaust on YouTube, see, oh, this guy doesn't have a haircut, we can't present him to customers. I'm just shooting myself <laughs> right. in the foot here. It's just kidding. No, right? Actually, please, Holger, you're, you're quite camouflaged. It's quite clever with a white ceiling and the white hair. Yeah, yeah, just just, oh, you just yeah. merges. But, but you're, 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 like you're in color as well, right? So it's uh, Trish and Molly who are the brave ones here, who have a contrast. <laughs> I'm not sure where your wall ends and your hair starts here. Trish has great hair. <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> to stay in the yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. 
Anything else? Any any last words? I mean, we don't have to make this any longer if, if we, we touched what we want to touch. No, I just think we should do these more often. Yeah, and, and see how things are developing, how some of these uh, different trans reactions we're going to see in the next month or two. What? Yeah, I'll well, just I think it's interesting back to, my... to see how. Go ahead. No, you have a team one. I was saying it's interesting to see how many of our presumptions and assumptions are true or not in the next 12 to 14, 16 weeks. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's put ourselves out there, right? Let's do some predictions in regards of. Uh, everybody does a prediction and then we match it. Let's do the prediction game. Okay. Anybody wants to go first? I'll Give us a time, time frame, Olga. The time frame, when to do the prediction now? No, <laughs> no when, when, to, when, when the prediction is off. Is, is off? Well, yeah, we'll, is we'll see. It. You can base it on anything. It well, should be short term. Okay, I'll, I'll start. How, how long do you think we'll be in this extreme lockdown? And people will realize we're creating more economic damage from that lockdown. I think people will be unhappy weeks. three, four weeks from now, which will put us into mid-April. What's what's your time frame, Molly, Trish, Thomas? I think it's at least May. I mean, I just think be, and people are going to get pissed about it, but I think it's going to be, and it may not hold, but people are going to be told at least through May, yeah. I think, to try and okay. isolate. May, May, think... begin, May beginning or end? Make it in weeks, Molly. May is a long month. <laughs> um, eight to ten weeks. Sorry, eight to ten weeks? Okay, cool. I'm going to go even further. I'm going to say at least 12. 12? 12 weeks? Okay. Again, and so we're talking about when will people be unhappy and not be holding this and say, this is crazy, let's just go to work. Or start Tomorrow. And so on. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I will say that I think it's going to be long enough to where the positive would be that we actually finally really need to start rethinking how we do things at work. Yeah. And so people who've maybe had ideas for many years and we've talked about a lot of interesting opportunities that never like, get an audience, mm -hmm. I think the next 12 weeks will be when we finally get some of those things in place. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Thomas? Yeah, I'm, I'm very hesitant to make a prediction because I'm not a... The, the, what's they call these virus expert people i can never present that word prevent that word beginning with e but anyway you're not predicting yeah. on the virus you're predicting on social sociology right when will people get right. uh, mad about being locked in their houses can't do this can't take it anymore and lose it and this might be country-wise culturally very different right so this is why it's interesting i think yeah uh, i think the germans will do it for as long as as long as the authorities ask them to do it for Still, still being the law of body. It's in very interesting. So, uh, well, there's also the social here. There's also the social infrastructures to support it. So people aren't right. Aren't, aren't going to necessarily lose their jobs. I mean, some will, but I don't want to over uh, over emphasize that Germany is a sort of uh, paradise. But I think the the social net is is strong enough that people yeah. largely won't be worried about about eating and, 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 and money and so on uh, for the duration. I think that there'll be issues longer term, but uh, I don't feel, see it as being, uh, being that being the major issue. And then the rest of it is around a social social compliance. And, and that will be partly governed, I think, by by people dying. Yeah. So when you see death rates and stuff, then that will influence it. But again, I'm not going to comment on what those are going to be because I have absolutely no idea. No. Oh, no, I'm just going to trust. Shocking. I've got to trust that the the right scientists are advising the governments, and the governments are listening to the are listening to the to the to the the, the, the right scientists, and that's that's really all. I, that's really all I can hope for. Yeah. We can only hope so. Amen. So, so from an yeah. HR manager, right? I'm Tish. I think you're the only dangerous person here, having been a practitioner, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Molly, have you been working in HR too? I don't know. No, I only write about it. Yeah, <laughs> Thomas, Thomas and me neither, right? We're, we're only, we're not practitioners. Yeah. So, yeah. so what's going to be the, what do you think is going to be the lesson learned in a few months from now from an HR person in the company right now? Uh, what what they've learned from this? What, what do we think we predict here? I think that they will rethink how they do crisis management because I think that there are a number of companies that don't have any plan. Um, I think the companies that do have plans, it's more around the things like weather disasters, you know, like what do you want to hurricane? How do I pay my people? How do I mobilize workers in a certain way? Things like that. And we don't think there's been enough on other fronts when a crisis happens. So I think that the big one for HR will be to do more crisis planning 
-hmm. and more communications planning too, because again, simple things like when you're hiring, if you, if you look at your um, example about grocery stores, they're obviously going to ramp up hiring. Well, if you can't do simple things like I mean, you know, um, it's going to be those simple task things that we're really going down to the very core of how we operate from a process perspective. And I think we see some big changes there. And I think even from a payroll perspective, there's going to be a lot of like furlough pay or half pay. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of complexity to manage when it comes to paying people in the next that's a year. You know, some companies are going to make policy decisions that handle it. I think that it's been good because so far, many of the larger payroll providers have started putting out quite a bit of guidance. So whether that's for their customers or potential customers in the future, I, I've been happy to see some of the information coming out of the payroll companies. But again, I think they have that expertise of handling payroll situations in other types of crises, and they're applying that sort of knowledge and best practices to this situation. So not a perfect match, but Maybe more so than um, any of our HR talent well, vendors. And this kind of reminds you of Katrina in that when one thing floods, when some most cities flood, when it floods, then it goes away right. after a few days. But when when the levees broke, it was all that land was that got flooded. It was a kind of disaster. And I think that's kind of where we are. We're used to disasters happening in locality, even multiple localities in the U.S., but having it be everywhere at the same time is going to be really different that's yeah. a great point molly because with the disasters as terrible they might be life goes on right the disaster is over right, right? so and there's other areas takes, that are like, clean a, a week <laughs> right <laughs> maybe a week to to ravage a place right. right but then it's over right uh whereas yeah. this is we, we're in it and we're living it and it's changing and we don't know when it's over thomas what do you mm -hmm. think yeah. will hr people say i think one of the one of the things that I, I think it's quite interesting watching a couple of companies is the approach to agile. Um, so, you know, what we're seeing is people actually doing scrum meetings and 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 having a much more uh, polished approach to, to 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 taking on these issues, relying, if you like, on 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 some of the techniques that have been developed in in in, in software development and in IT. Uh, so, so that's something that I've taken away. I think is quite 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 interesting the idea that look we haven't got three months to figure this out we've got to figure it out you know what are we going to do today and what did we achieve today what are we going to do tomorrow what we're going to achieve tomorrow so bringing that 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 discipline to hr i think is 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 very good this this crisis will enable hr to i think the best hr departments will emerge out of this with 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 a new set of tools a new set of disciplines um, that will enable them to build a better reputation within the organization and and and, and beyond yeah. I think other HR departments that fail will, will will be in serious trouble from their from their leaders. But the HR departments, I think, that uh, work effectively through this will, will will develop a much better respect within the organ within their organisations than perhaps they've had in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ones that fail will fail badly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't waste a crisis. Yeah. For for, for yeah. me, it's about for me, it's about like what have I? I should have done more to technology enable my company to be agile or to accelerate or to take this conversation. I think that's that's the key part. And that goes beyond the HR system. I mean, we mentioned great yeah. challenge in the HR system, like what have we done that people can share documents, that they can use remote right. working, that they use video sharing and so on, and how much homework or how much skeletons in the closets, how much technical depth do we have in the department? But hey, yeah, I think it's great. We don't want to run it more than one hour because people might have to jump to the next call. It's getting 11 o'clock. But last question, Molly, when is your next Peloton ride? Um, probably another week or so. Probably in a week What's or so. You're not. You're, you're still recovering from any surgery. Okay. I Chris, am, your next yeah. workout. Well, oh, I already had mine today. So we've been with the two teenagers home, weightlifting, running, uh, everything. Be specific. Your next one. <laughs> tomorrow. Every tomorrow. day. Very good. Thomas, your next one. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'll, I'll be used for catch me on the telephone this afternoon. This was great. Thank you so much for joining us for thanks. the inaugural. Thanks, guys. Let's do, let's do this game one of these days. Time. And, uh, and thanks so much for having me on. Thomas, stay healthy. Okay? Yes. Thanks, guys. Stay healthy. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.